Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Ali Show, and today we have a very special guest, Mr. Mizuho Matsuyama, originally Hello. from Japan. <laughs> Uh, Mizuho, good to have you here today. How are you, man? I'm good. Thank you for inviting me. Hey, bro. It's an honor. Um, and Mizuho, our guest, uh, first ever guest who's, uh, whose first language is not actually English. So um, uh, we, we, you know, we'll try our best to do what we can. But, um, uh, you know, just again, thank you so much for coming here and doing this with us, Mizuho. Um, yeah, let's get straight into it, Mizuho. Um, for those of us who don't know who you are, could you give us a brief introduction about yourself? Okay. Uh, I'm Mizuho Matsuyama. Uh, I'm an MMA fighter. Yeah, I'm from Japan. Uh, I'm from Ishikawa, Japan, like part of Japan. Name is Ishikawa. It's, yeah, I grew up Ishikawa all the time. Mm. Pretty yeah. much all of your... A childhood, teenage years were from Ishikawa. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, is is that more of c central uh part of Japan, Ishikawa? Uh, yeah, it's uh close to. Yeah, cr uh, I don't think close to oh, okay. like it's yeah Tokyo. It's almost central. Yeah, central. But I think Ishikawa is pretty small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Um, but you would you say Ishikawa is more of like a city, like a, compared to like Auckland? Uh, I, th I guess it's same as Auckland. Almost the same. Yeah, yeah, bigger, so, but uh, is it is it quite big over there? Or uh, I think same. <laughs> about the same. same? Yeah, oh, okay. Same. Cool. And um, were you part of like a, a, a big family or uh, in Japan? Uh, I don't think quite big. Mm. Uh, I have my mom and my dad and my sister and my brother mm. and uh, some cousins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so Mizuho, uh, a little bit about like, um, I, just wanted, I was just curious like, what is the cost of living like in, in Japan, bro? Is it pretty expensive to live in, in Japan? Yeah, I, th I think so. Uh, like, I don't know Ishikawa because I have home in Ishikawa, but when I, when I live in Niigata and Tokyo, it's pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it costs 400 a month. Mm. It's cheapest price, but... You can yeah. you can find something yeah, from. Yeah, but I, but from I think month. yeah, like Auckland, more mm, expensive. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely way more expensive. But yeah, like you said, um, because yeah, from what I know, from my knowledge of like Tokyo and and all that, like yeah. that's pretty expensive. What what is like the cost of um, like for example, cost of a room in Tokyo for like a month? Ah, uh, almost double. Cheapest. cheapest? Yeah, yeah uh, roughly. Yeah, five four hundred, five hundred. 500? It yeah. is, that's not too bad. Yeah, but uh, when I live in Tokyo, mm. uh, I have toilet, but I don't have no shower. Oh. Oh, yeah, crazy. Damn. <laughs> so how do you, how do you take a shower, bro? Uh, because I want to be MMA fighter, so. Yeah, there was like some I was of the gonna, Yeah, like, yeah, I was going to go like gym, mm. gym's shower, but yeah. I quit that gym. Then I don't have shower, but we have like onsen, you know, like, onsen pools yeah, yeah, and onsen all pool, that. Yeah. yeah, that's and then I, I, I it's took, just sacrifice, yeah. man. Yeah. That's... But it's too hard. I never, wow. I never, I, I never do that. Damn, <laughs> yeah, that's we need shower. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy sacrifices, bro. So for those who don't know, uh, Mizuho actually competed alongside uh, some of the other teammates at City Kickboxing. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Lawrence, Jason, and also Kevin Juse at the uh, Shuriken Fight Series. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, but uh, before we do, we go there. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about like your martial arts background, bro. Um, could you tell us how you know when you started like doing martial arts and uh, how it started? Okay, uh, I started judo when I was maybe two years old, three years old, 
maybe for two years, but I don't remember. Mm. Don't remember. It's probably like too young yeah. to remember anything yeah, back because, then. Yeah, uh, because my cousins has BJJ, BJJ school. Mm. Uh, no, not BJJ school. Sorry, judo school. Yeah, it's quite strong team, but I quit. Uh, I had to do judo because I'm cousins. Mm. <laughs> so, but I quit that yeah. that because. I don't want to do that. You do, you do uh, yeah, like I don't it. know why, but yeah, I'm quite small. Mm. <laughs> yeah, quite young. Sorry, quite yeah. young. Yeah. And then I play basketball, maybe uh, 13 years old to 18 years old. Mm. You used to compete yeah, yeah, for yeah. Like, schools and when all that. I, yeah, when I was go go school. Mm. Then I went to university and I... Hey you, don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. I was gonna do play keep keep playing basketball but I had trouble. Oh yes, like, trouble. Yeah, what trouble. happened? What happened? Yeah, Tell us. Like I'm fighting teammates. Oh it's too terrible. But mm. yeah, my friends uh punching my face. Oh yeah, then, yeah, we're fighting, but I couldn't punch in his face. Mm. Why was that, bro? Yeah, I don't know, just... Is I'm, it like respect like, or like you didn't want to hurt your friend or... Uh, because I never punch in face. <laughs> you, you've never like, punched yeah, anyone I, before, yeah. yeah. So, mm. I think that's why I couldn't punch, but I'm, I'm so disappointed by myself because mm. like I afraid everything because if I punch, like university, like you get, get kicked, ex yeah, expelled, yeah, kicked kick, out. Kick, yeah, so I just mm. really afraid that because, yeah, that's very up. I'm, I'm afraid. Yeah, ob obviously, like you don't want to lose, you know, get kicked out of school. Yeah. I mean, who would want that? But that's okay. Yeah. Was that was that a reason why you started to get into martial arts? Yeah, uh, that's why I start. Uh, because I'm fighting. Then, yeah, I got when I got punch. Mm. Uh it's not too much hard. You you didn't feel. You yeah, didn't, sorry. You, you didn't feel <laughs> I, like yeah, the. I didn't feel. Um, like it. It didn't hurt you. Yeah, I did hurt. Mm. So, yeah, maybe I, I can. I wanna. Yeah, because I couldn't punch, so I wanna learn yeah, how I wanna, to. Yeah, how to punch mm. or something. Then, I go. But that's really cool. Like yeah. uh, you know, from how you wanted to learn martial arts from getting attacked yeah. you know like because of that experience yeah. it pushed you to go out and learn how to oh that's that's pretty cool bro and so um and then what was the first uh oh not the first but like what did you do after that like where uh, did you go yeah i i did boxing for year but i really wanted to do mma mma yeah so yeah. i did boxing was but it was it big back then um, MMA was it huge or? Uh, I think that at the moment, uh, boxing, like huge event. I in think. in Japan. In Japan, yeah. Mm, okay. Mixed martial arts, at, at it's not too huge not because yet. at the moment we don't have rising or something, no big event. Back in, back yeah. in those days, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, like after I finish Pride. Yeah. yeah, and so, um. You picked up boxing was your first and uh, how how long did you like train or did you compete over there? Uh, yeah, I did compete maybe five or six fights. Mm. Uh, how's that? How's that experience? Uh, there? Uh, it's yeah, it's good, but like they wanted to, they wanted to me professional boxer, but mm. I don't wanna do because I wanna change. Yeah, mixed you wanted to do arts. martial yeah. arts, mixed yeah. martial arts. So, yeah. I see, I see. Okay, and then after that, um, you understand you took BJJ as well. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did BJJ, uh, when I was university, like for two year. Mm. Maybe I start nineteen years old. Yeah, like, yeah, I I keep training boxing and do BJJ mm -hmm. same time. Oh, that's that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. And um. So when you were, you know, after you uh, graduated from university uh, and all that, um, what did you do in uh, in Japan? Like, were you working full time or? Ah, uh, yeah, I I working full time. In yeah, I'm working full time. Uh, I 
I had, I had job, a mm. uh, railway engineer. Yeah, as a railway yeah, engineer. Yeah, railway Man, engineer. that's pretty cool. Oh, that's thank you. Cool. <laughs> and um, like, was that was that like a normal? Uh, was it a tough job or what was yeah, that experience like? Really what what what, what did you have to do? Um, uh, because I wanted to go in Tokyo mm. because Tokyo has so many MMA gym, mm. so that's why I I just chose. No that, reason, yeah. Yeah, that that job yeah. was like a a way for you to get to Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. I didn't ah, know okay. how how to work, but mm. yeah, I chose that job. <laughs> I see that's yeah. really cool. And um, what what was like the uh like you mentioned you know off before we did this like you mentioned uh something about like you know long hours, crazy hours. Ah, working yeah, there. yeah. Like normally work. 8 to 5 p.m. Yeah, I did that. But after that, two hour, three hour rest, then I come back work 9 p.m. Yeah, sometimes start 11 p.m. 11 p.m. to morning. Yeah, 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Wow, and then few hours yeah. rest and then yeah. back to work again. Uh, I Sometimes I can get rest, but mm. sometimes keep going like finish work 5 p 5 a.m. and then go home to our trip then come back work yeah that's crazy oh but oh. good good sorry yeah that's well, <laughs> <laughs> i'd imagine that's uh definitely really good money yeah and so like you you were doing that like what how many days a week were you doing that bro? uh not every time but i worked it's terrible, terrible mm. thing is I worked seven times. Seven days a yes. week? Ah, yeah, seven days a week. Whoa, that's crazy, man. Yeah, I'm, that's... Pretty, I'm pretty sure at some point, like, that actually is not good for your body, right? Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> man, it's struggling. And, um, yeah. man, I imagine that might, that might, like, I'd imagine that would be quite a dangerous job as well. Yeah. Like working on the railways. Yeah. Because the... Um, the railways don't don't stop or the the bullet trains yeah. and the railways it's yeah. like it goes 24 hours a day yeah. is it correct uh not 24 hours a day but like almost 24 hours working so that's we have to be careful to work yeah well there are a lot of like accidents and deaths yeah. in it. so scary <laughs> yeah so yeah sometimes yeah it's a terrible accent but we have to care. We had to care for if mm. I worked that job. You just had to be like real extra careful. Yeah. Damn, bro. But yeah, like I, I imagine it's like you get fatigued and you get quite tired. Yeah. And like you have to focus because yeah, like, you know, true. <laughs> you make a mistake on the railway, like that's oof, that's not a joke, man. Pretty dangerous job. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh, would you say, like, uh, as a, a a young adult, you know, like, especially in Japan, you know, earning, like, big money, you know, good money, doing yeah. a lot of hours and all yeah. that, um, how, how did you, like, spend your money? Did you, were you spending on, did you have hobbies, like, you know, cars or stuff like that, or did you just wanted to save? Uh, actually, I don't have hobby. Mm. Uh, like... I have hobby, but I want to training. Like I, your hobby I, was yeah, I, I, going to train. And yeah, I really want to do mixed martial arts, but I couldn't do that. So I save money. Then, yeah, I just I was thinking like I definitely quit that mm -hmm. job. Yeah, that, that job was just basically for you to save enough. Yeah, so that you can go somewhere else yeah, yeah, to train. Yeah. Mm. And um. So the when when you took that job, you said um, that was like a, a kind of a ticket for you to uh, go to Tokyo. Yep. And I understand for some time it, that you didn't get to go to Tokyo. Uh yeah, I didn't get. Mm. I didn't go to Tokyo. Yeah, because like some coworker mm. said, I can work in Tokyo. That's why I chose that job, but. They move, they move me like side country, mm. like yeah, it's a rural like, part of Japan yeah, instead. Yeah, like there so is how did more you, place. How did you like maintain like training and all that? Uh, 
and I I look for us and I looked a kickbox gym, mm. but it's pretty far. Like, uh, one way it takes one hour by the car. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, I decided to I decided to go kickboxing, mm. and I learn BJJ still work still learn BJJ, but BJJ place pretty far. It takes two hour one way. Wow. It's wow. That's, that's yeah, a pretty that's, hard to learn a, martial arts. Uh, yeah, that's a long drives as well, and I imagine because you already worked like yeah. long hours, and then you have to drive. Yeah. But I couldn't go every day. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's a that's a lot of sacrifice there, man. Um long journeys and man, I'd imagine like after training you're pretty tired as well. Yeah. And then having to drive back an hour or two hours. Yeah. I'm crazy. I know. <laughs> oh bro, that's 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 dedication. Nah. I, I just wanna be a fighter. <laughs> mixed martial arts. I wanna I wanna do mixed martial arts. Man. And so so that like, um, you did you move to Tokyo after like at any point and train at an MMA gym in Tokyo? Or? Uh, yeah, like I worked for two years, mm. but I can't be patient. I I couldn't be patient. Like I really wanna do mixed martial arts, so I quit job. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to Tokyo. Then I wanna be MMA fighter. Mm. Then I go. MMA gym maybe three months, but I couldn't run mixed martial arts. I don't know why. Like, huh. yeah, like I don't know why. <laughs> Just I went to MMA gym, but like they teach just provider. Now, I'm not provider, but I had like kickboxing skill. Mm. I'm not good BJJ to be honest, but. I could do kickboxing, but yeah, they couldn't join. Uh, I they couldn't me join MMA. Could, you couldn't you couldn't join the MMA team. Yeah, yeah, MMA, MMA training. Yeah. So and uh, so many people stay there, so everybody can couldn't training. So how many? Okay, wait. When you say so many people training there, uh, how many people are there in the gym? Like that gym, quite small place. Okay. Like because Tokyo is, like, you know, too busy. It's just heaps, yeah, heaps yeah, of people. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, look like one room. <laughs> and we're training, mm. two hundred, one hundred. Yeah, fuck, it's so busy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's, then it's that's really, why. It's really yeah, rough. Yeah, that's why I couldn't training. Yeah. Because it's hard. It's hard to train because there's no space. Number yeah. one. And like, there's just too many people, like you don't really learn or... Yeah. You, yeah, how do you learn there? Like it's, yeah, then I couldn't train in MMA. You couldn't learn anything. Like, yeah, you I, could go to training, yeah. but you didn't learn anything. Yeah, I didn't learn anything. Mm, okay. And then I quit because... It, it just wasn't... Yeah, yeah I, I... And then I stopped... Stopped... Go doing to, MMA yeah, for a while. Yeah. yeah. And then... Yeah, I stopped... Yeah, and then I just three. I I stayed more three months. Yeah, in Jap in, in Tokyo, Tokyo. Yeah, but I didn't do anything like just work mm. as a job. But yeah, part time job. Mm. And then yeah, I watched. Yeah, I I really, I really wanted to go like United States. Mm. Yeah, to the US. Yeah, US okay. because. Yeah, I love UFC, so mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, I want to be a UFC fighter. You know, everybody wants to be a UFC mm -hmm. fighter. So, yeah, US, uh, I, I just, I thought uh, USA closer to UFC. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I, I search a lot. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of searching. Yeah, and... I, I did so how did, a lot. So, how, how, how did you then decide to come to New Zealand? Uh, because... Like I think at the time like Dan Hooka and Israel mm. and uh stick kickboxing like famous. Dan Dan was uh not in the was it Dan because Dan's the first one that got into the UFC. Yeah yeah yeah. So he was not in, in the UFC at that time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah okay. Yeah. And it's 
quite famous CKB, and then uh, yeah, I was saw Israel in yeah, Israel, Israel was in glory. Yeah, but the most important thing, like mm. I thought, Israel starts uh, kickboxing 18 years old. Mm. Yeah, and I start quite late. Like I so start almost boxing, the same. Yeah, yeah, almost same. I'm start boxing. Yeah, that's why. But Israel la uh, grow like grow up really mm. strong. Mm. Like he yeah he got he, he got very good striker and uh yeah he's a striker mm. and and I'm I'm not busy for that. Mm. Like I don't know how to escape. Well, I don't know how to wrestle. Yeah, well, you know, but like not the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you you know how to do it, but it's just not your yeah. favorite, yeah, not yeah. your best part of your game. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I thought Eugene make him. Mm. So, so yeah, I wanna run. Help from, him to yeah, become the fighter yeah. that he is. Yeah. He, yeah. I thought he's a great coach, so that's mm. why I come here. And uh, New Zealand has working holiday visa, so mm. I can work. And yeah, train at the same yeah, time. Yeah, train. If you were have to have went to the US, that wouldn't have been the case, ah, was it? That, yeah, that's like you probably could only train, but you can't work yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I can't work or yeah, illegal. That would be hard. Yeah, illegal work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, when when did you come over to New Zealand, or what year uh, was it? I think two thousand nineteen. Mm. May? May, yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, so then you came to New Zealand and uh, I understand you took part in the uh, a program. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. With the warrior. Mm. Like, I, I passed, I didn't understand English, everything, at yeah, at all. Yeah, mm. I didn't know everything. Yeah. Then, like, I was going to go, uh, like, I got visa, June, June twentieth. Mm. Then I go. Uh, sticky. Uh, I go, New Zealand. Mm. Yeah, but visa is starts June twenty. Okay. But Winter Warrior starts June twenty, twenty. Same same time. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then like. And uh, I have to go. Like. English school. Mm. To because, take English classes. Yeah, yeah, take English class. And so I couldn't training ten. The morning session. Yeah, morning session. I couldn't. Uh, yeah, I can't training morning session. Mm. So, but Wimp to Warrior starts 6.45. A.M. Uh, no, sorry, 6. Yeah, 6. 6 a.m. Uh, I think 5.30, sorry. 5.30, so, yeah. yeah, okay. So I can training 5.30, then mm. I go to school, then I... I can work. I uh, I go training, mm -hmm. maybe evening. Mm, the evening training, yeah. Program, yeah, classes and all that. Yes, so that's why I chose Wim the Warrior. But I couldn't read Wim the Warrior thing. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's. So how yeah. how was like uh, how did you find that um, you know coming coming here and then? So you oh, I, was there a time where uh, if I'm not wrong. You had to go back to Japan for. S Did you come here first and then, was um? Cause yeah, someone was telling me. Ah uh, yeah, like, like tryout. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. I so come you, May. Like. Mm, you came because in May. I I had to. I had to do tryout, mm. so I went. Yeah, because I want to watch, how how to training mm, in CKB. How it goes and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then I come, I try. Yeah. When I do Winter Warrior tryout, mm. like I understand like beginners training. Yeah, I'm I'm still I was being a MMA, mm. but I had experience, experience. kickboxing and BJJ. Mm. Yeah, and then yeah, I thought ah I have to cancel Winter Warrior. Mm. Then I said I I sent message like CKB and I asked Yuge. But he said, now nah, you join. <laughs> I joined. Mm. Then I, I did with Warrior. Yeah, but it's that's a great experience for me. Like Wimp to Warrior is mm. such a great long now. Learning ex hard. yeah, learning experience because you hey you don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. 
So yeah, because um, Wim to Warrior, you you really you're learning everything, not just like boxing, kickboxing. It's yeah. like wrestling, BJJ. It's like you put it all together. And so, how long was that uh, that whole Wim to Warrior program? Uh, that I think six months, mm-hmm. five months. Yeah, I think six months. Yeah, it's really good for me. And then you actually had a fight at the end of that yeah, program as well. Yeah, we we can get least one fight. Man, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty cool. So, what was your what was your first impression like um, when you came to CKB and you did that tryouts? Like, how did you find it? And ah, uh, website. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I search website because yeah, I was I was gonna thinking go USA or mm-hmm. oh. yeah, New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I chose New Zealand. Yeah. Then I lo- looked Wimp to Warrior training mm-hmm. and the six months like Wimp to Warrior program is make mixed martial arts fighter. Mm-hmm. So ah, I wanna learn this. So yeah. um, like um okay, so then when you came to New Zealand and then you train at CKB, yeah. um was it was it very difficult, bro, in the beginning? Like cause you didn't know any English. Yeah. Such so tough. Damn. I, I, to be honest, I, I wanna go home. So I, I, I wanted to go home that mm-hmm. time, because I don't have friends. I can't speak English, and uh, I don't wanna be bother mm-hmm. anyone. So, it's just too hard, for me. Damn. Yeah. So then that was that was when the English classes came in. Yeah. And helped you to. I don't think help. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I can't say that, but. Yeah. Yeah. Like, wow, your English, like your English, definitely way yeah, better, better now. Because Jim CKB always teach me English. Yeah. That's better than English school for me. Sorry, English school. That's not the best uh, school, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, I know what just, you mean. Yeah. Just make friends and mm. talking speak, to yeah, people. talking to people by English. That's Google, better. Google to Translate learn. on yeah. your phone. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And uh, my English. Uh, make grew up definitely from Rob Kiwi Rob, mm. my best friend. Kiwi Rob, yeah. yeah he... Tell us the um the story of how you met uh, Kiwi Rob, uh, Rob Nicholson. Ah, uh, Rob Nicholson. Yeah, <laughs> that's his real name. Yeah. <laughs> how, how did you meet Rob and um? Uh, just when I, I do first time with the warrior, mm. then like Eugene <laughs> screaming. Teach, <laughs> using screaming teach teach us then, yeah like I don't have partner. What, mm. what what did he say? I didn't understand. But like I go just I I just lucky just mm. first time I partner give with Rob. Rob yeah with Rob he really kind for me mm. yeah because I didn't speak English but he's a uh, he tried tried to struggle to understand for my English, mm. and uh, yeah, we just keep training together. Damn, that's pretty cool. Um, and so I understand like uh, one of the some of the struggles you had in the beginning was like, um, you know, obviously not being able to talk in English, and then like looking for houses and all that in Auckland. So how did you? Uh, how did you do that, bro? Like looking for places to live uh, and all that in the beginning. Like Auckland has like so many different country mm. people. Like mm. Japanese, yeah, stay here. So many people. Then we have like Japanese website in Auckland. Mm. Live how to live. So I found Japanese website. Then I live. That was how you yeah I, you, yeah like you use that website yeah too, yeah like I use website yeah well. I use website, and then uh, yeah I just found my mm. lip were you were you saying as well like uh, this is this websites were charging like very expensive <laughs> expensive prices, I don't like one room two people mm. damn two people yeah like hundred fifty. That's expensive. I'm not sure, bro. That's one person. That's two people in one room. Yeah, one room. And one person paying 150. Yes. Yeah. Quite. That's, yeah. That's expensive. that's pretty expensive. To be uh, honest, it's pretty expensive. And Man. just one bed. Then I, 
I sleep on the floor. On the floor. Like maybe four months. Oh. Yeah, yeah but just experience now. <laughs> Crazy experiences. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy experiences. And uh like we we've to worry I I did we have to worry at the same time. Like I sleep on the floor. That's <laughs> too hard. <laughs> oh my like, goodness. This tough life, yeah, bro. Tough life. Tough life. Yeah. Shit. Damn. And then um was that uh um so after that how, how why did you obviously that was like pretty rough and then you decided that was when you after four months you like moved out of the place. Uh like <laughs> Because... What did you... Did you ask anybody or did you talk to anybody about this? Like, hey, is this normal? <laughs> because, uh, you know, like, mm. I'm a little bit shy. Mm. So I didn't t- tell, tell anyone. Or yeah, ask but, him. like, my best friend always ask me, mm. how's my place? And then I I, I didn't want to say that. Mm. Like, I can't be bothered. Everybody. Mm. I don't want to do that. But... Yeah, Rob always ask me, always ro- worry me. Then, mm. yeah, he helped me a lot. Then I said, uh, I sleep on the floor. And then, what? <laughs> <laughs> then why are you sleeping on the but floor, yeah, you man? Have so. to, you have to move. Yeah. And then I move, like, more cheap press, mm. the closer, closer than, a uh, closer... To the gym. Is, yeah, to the gym. But maybe two months, I stayed there two months or one month. Mm. Yeah, but I got, like, I don't know how to say, like, I got, like, some itchy, like, oh, insect. Itch, yeah, yeah, insect bites. Yeah, like, insect bites, yeah. Oh, damn. So terrible. <gasps> and then Rob moved. Yeah, yeah you should like, move. You and get then, out of there. Yeah, I, I moved. Yeah. Then my press now really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's crazy. Um, So I talk, like, the, uh, you know, at the end of the Winter Warrior, and then you got managed to get a fight and all that. And so uh, fast forward to the fight that you had two weeks ago. Uh, so that was on the Shuriken fight series. Um, how was that experience for you, bro? Yeah, so that's really good. Like, mm. looks professional fight, but it's an amateur fight. Mm. Like, I, I watch Japanese fight a lot. Like, no rising, like small, like... Shows and yeah, events. Yeah, small show, yeah. Mm. Like, it's... Yeah, I think better... Shuriken, like, really big, huge mm. event. Yeah, it, 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 like I that, think, that one's a, yeah, a, it's like really, a decent-sized yeah. event at the North Shore. Yeah. It's got a, you know, decent place, but... And um, how how was that experience training, training for that fight? And, ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, so good. Like, everybody helped me. I'm impressed, CKB. It's, yeah, it's best gym in the world. Mm. And um, so then you you know, uh, how how was how what, how was the the fight for you like um, how was how was the fight for you like mm. what is your uh, what yeah. did you gain or what did you what did you learn or what did you take from this fight? To be honest, I couldn't do my performance. Like, yeah, maybe I couldn't do performance because. You know, guys, my pa- my training performance, yeah, like getting strong than before. Yeah, it's yeah, I'm disappointed mm. for my fight, but yeah, I'm still head up to training, and uh, yeah, I want to fight. Mm. But um, so sorry, um, sorry, I just have to ask, like, ah, why, sorry. why, why, why did you, why did you say you're disappointed? Like, you, do you mean like, okay? Hmm. Did did you what for, like you wanted to you have a plan yeah and then you wanted to carry out your plan, but you didn't get to or you didn't get to perform like yeah. what your plan was or like yeah like Eugene said to me hmm. go take down but I tried to just once and uh you tried to do a take down yeah, once and then yeah hmm. I just tried to do take down once and. Yeah, but I couldn't, like, my opponent did take down defense. Mm. Then, yeah, I'm afraid to take down. Mm. Like, yeah, you didn't then, want yeah, to yeah, do that again. Yeah, because I'm striker. But, mm. 
Yeah, I had to take down because I know how to take down. Mm. But you have a very good take yeah, down. Yeah, ah, yeah. uh, maybe. <laughs> 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 but when I when I fight, I I forgot everything to take down. <laughs> maybe I nervous. Yeah, uh, yeah. maybe maybe yeah. it's the nerves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have like ten take down. Mm. I have ten kind of take down, but mm. I forgot just once take down like single leg. Mm. Uh, I don't know how to do that. I forgot <laughs> okay, to take so, off opponent. So like the, it was was it because of all the lights and it, it was a bit different, you know, compared to like yeah, the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh. yeah. But great experience. Yeah, ex ex exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's a good experience. So I mean, you definitely learned a lot from this fight. Yeah. And, yes, uh, yes. You know, so you definitely be taking what you know this experience and you bring it to your next fight and then you try and implement yeah. new things sure. and um but yeah so uh unfortunately you didn't get away with the win but you know like i said like there was a, a big learning experience for you you know and i would say like that one was uh even for like amateur fight like that felt yeah you know was you know you had the, the cage there was like heaps of people there, you know, the lights, the music, like that was a very high standard um, like event, you know, and you get to feel, you know, yeah. <laughs> and it's good. Like, you know, you know what I think, like what I, why I think it's a good, it's a good reason why that one's an amateur fight. Like um, people have different opinions, but like, I think that's, uh, it, it's good to, to, to have all these amateur fights so that you gain all this experience so that when the time comes and you fight professionally, yep. you already have all this experience, bro. Yeah, you yeah. know, you know what I mean. Like you rather want to have this experience as an amateur than to have it as a pro. So like, it definitely did help a lot. Yeah, you know? true. It's, it's it's and it's so it's so good that you have you know platforms like this. Like you have people like um, Shuriken or um, Jason was his name who organized this event and yes. put this event together. And give people the opportunity, bro, to uh, to try yes. to fight, you know, and yeah. to do an MMA fight and all that. And I, it's not an easy task. It's a big, it's a big thing, you know, to to do organize this whole thing. It's not easy. But um, man, heads off to uh, to Jason from Shuriken for uh, for for doing that, bro. Um, and what did you think about the other teammates' um, performances? Uh yeah, they. Kevin, Lawrence, Jason, mm -hmm. yeah, they're a really great fighter. And Jason lost, but he's a really good grappler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, yeah, he's, uh, just keep, keep training. Then, yeah, I know he's, uh, he's real, a yeah, he's really strong grappler. Mm -hmm. Because first round, uh, yeah, like, look like a Habib. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Numagomedo. Yeah, yeah, Jason Numagomedo, he's so good fighter. Mm. And uh, Lawrence, yeah, quite strong. Mm. Yeah, he, yeah, he's really great. Asian, he's, same, he's, got, yeah. he's got a lot of power. Yeah. And uh, he, maybe he, yeah, I don't know when he turned pro, but yeah, he's a, uh, on the way he's yeah. on the like very soon yeah really. yeah i think yeah, i think so yeah, yeah. and uh kevin yes everyone knows <laughs> he's such a so strong yeah he's a strong yeah. guy man yeah, yeah i know and uh i liked his uh i liked his elbow that he yeah, caught he caught the guy with and uh, put him down uh, that was that was pretty cool man um Mizo, i have some questions for you man um one of the questions I have is, you know, you're obviously a big fan of MMA, UFC and all that. Um, who is your favorite fighter, bro? Um, and and why? Why is, is he, you, that your favorite fighter? My favorite fighter? Like, yeah, of course, I love Israel, Brad, Dan, Shen, Kai. But as I else, I... Yeah, I outside of CKB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. outside of CKB. Yeah, GSP. Mm. George St. Pierre. Yeah, GSP and uh, your favorite all-time fighter. And uh, Horiguchi. Horiguchi. Yeah. yeah. And why? Why would? Why are they your favorite fighters? Uh, because when I watch UFC, mm. uh, like GSP is the most famous fighter. 
in the back UFC. in those days. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, like he can do karate. Mm. Yeah, kyokushin. He did kyokushin, kyokushin in like Japanese. Kyokushin karate is like Japanese fight style. Mm. And yeah, that's why I like GSP. And he is a complete fighter. He can do everything like taco. Uh, BJJ, stand striking, up, ground yeah, game, everything. Everything yeah. he can do, everything. So, and what um, it just to mention about like GSP, and how like the losses that GSP had, he avenged those losses, like the fight with Matt Sarah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, like he avenged his losses. Like after in the rematch, like he changed a lot of things mm. and do a lot of things differently. I think that's. That's one of the things that made GSP like great, is because he comes back from his losses. He works on like all the weakness, and then when he comes back, he's like so much more better. It's crazy. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's probably yeah he definitely he's probably like pound for pound one of you know the best. But what I really liked about um, um, GSP just recently did a podcast with uh, Joe Rogan. And um, he, he he talked about a lot of things, bro. Like there was, for people who haven't watched the podcast with GSP, um, I think they should really go and have a listen. But he talked about a lot of things like his experience fighting, doing MMA, competing, and like, you know, all his lessons, you know. Some of the things that he was talking about was, um, you know, and this is what like Eugene said as well, it's like not to put all your eggs in one basket, you know, not to uh, have, like, you know, some people, they just 100% on fighting, yeah. but they don't have any backup plans. So, like, nothing, you know, no, no backup plans. Like, we all want to have, like, if anything happens, like, we have a, a, a plan. But, and also, like, things about training. Uh, what was really good was when he was talking about training and how, like, he... He exper- his experience was he saw a lot of young fighters or other people in the gym who were training too hard or who, or who when they were they were sparring or when they were fighting they were probably like hitting too hard or t- working they were just draining their bodies punching too hard or kicking too hard like and he, they, he was talking about CTE and why it's very important to learn about CTE because um, you don't want to damage yourself yeah. in the training gym you yeah. know you want to save your you want to learn as much as you can get better improve learn all your techniques and everything and use that for your fight but what he was saying was like when he know what he noticed was a lot of people was going so hard in the gym and they were getting hurt injury you know getting damaged and this that whatnot and then you can't fight or like what's worse is like you know you can suffer from a brain injury bro and, and like, if you suffer from a brain injury, you can't fight anymore. You can't compete yeah. anymore. That's going to be, like, way worse. And, um, you know, he talked about a lot of things, bro. Like, even how people should learn how to manage their money when they're fighting, you know. And you should know also know that, like, there is an age you reach where you already pass your prime, you know. And, like, you should probably maybe retire or, you know, Everybody, he, what he was saying, what I like was everybody love fighting, you know, like for fighters, you know, everybody loves fighting, but you should fight for the right reasons, <laughs> you know, like, um, yeah, and even Joe Rogan was saying like, you know, some people now how, for people who love to do it, it's okay, but imagine if you, the only reason you're fighting is because you got no money. You are only fighting just for money. Yeah. Like, at that point, that's not the best reason, yeah. you know, to carry on fighting. Like, it's it's hard, it's sad, but in reality, that sometimes, like, some people have to do it, you know, yeah. because they didn't learn how to manage their money or they didn't make, they, they didn't make good choices or didn't have good advice, you know. But yeah, um, people should go and check that out. I don't want to repeat <laughs> everything what they said, but now that was a cool podcast. Um, the other question I, I had is, um, so you have uh, uh, your own style of fighting, right? Your own, yeah. uh, your own style. Where you know, obviously, you 
you take styles from different people. Um, who who are the, some of the fighters that you take your styles from, bro? Uh, my style, I copy. I wouldn't say copy, but like, you know, you take inspiration yeah, from like, different people. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah like Israel and uh, South Africa. Mm. Yeah, I try to... You learn, yeah. you, like you learn a lot of... Yeah. Their, te- their, their skills and techniques and yeah. their style. And you take a lot of things from them. Is, is, was there any reason why? or? Uh, because Eugene told me mm. I have to like I have to do like distance, get distance. Mm. Like distance. Manage is, the distance. Yeah, yeah, distance is the most important thing. So yeah, Israel and the Dan Hook are really long range. They have like long range. Mm. And I'm quite big. Like, For as, your weight yeah, category. Yeah, like I'm fighting flyweight, so I'm quite tall. Big, yeah, taller. For a flyweight fight. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that just that's why I... You take their styles yeah. from there. Fighting for, on the outside. Mm, okay. But, yeah, like... I want to take Brad style, but a little bit crazy, like because he's really exciting fight. Mm. So a very, very, yeah. very exciting yeah. fighter. I like that style. <laughs> mm. A bit more risk, a bit more dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but people are exciting mm. for him. And it's like enter- it's like entertainment. People like yeah. to watch the crazy fights. You know, people like to watch the the violent ones. You know. That's just that's just how it is. Yeah. You know, uh, it's it's funny, like, you know, obviously we talk about like UFC fighters, MMA fighters, like we talk about people who like to wrestle and people who like to strike. You know, usually you tend to watch uh people who like to strike more. You know, that's more in more interesting, you know. Uh yeah, that's really cool. Um the other one would be like uh you know who 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 are someone like the the role or maybe who is a role model like uh in, in your life like, uh, who do you... for now like mm. definitely Eugene because he looked after me a lot and uh, he taught me MMS skill and uh, that's why I choose because he's a uh, like fair person you know like he's uh not just one people like everybody. Like he kind for everybody. Mm. Like, yeah, he teach MMA skill. Everybody, I think, he's a yeah, he's a fair person. Mm. I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And he's, would you say like he's a he's a very honest person. He yeah, like what you said. He treats everybody yeah equally. Even like from if you a beginner or you are world champion, like he yeah. just treats everybody yeah, the yeah, same. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, he just take cross, and like he he teach five fifteen cross. Fifteen oh. class. Yeah, five ah yeah. uh, five fifty start uh, five, five. Sorry, five fifty. Yeah, and uh, he come back night time night time, and he take sometimes he take six forty five cross, like beginner MMA. He's a very hard worker. Yeah. You can definitely, you can yeah. say that he's very hey, hard. You. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. You know, if you're a UFC matchmaker, you know, dream fight. What would your dream fight be, bro? Who would you? I want to watch. Who would you matchmake? I want. I really want to watch Habib versus GSP. Ooh. Yeah, everybody want to watch. That's like I a think. dream. Yeah, that's like a, one fight. of the the bucket list fights that needs to happen. Yeah. And uh, okay, so who who would you say would, would be winning that fight? Uh I like both, but mm. I hope GSP. GSP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, oh, man, in the uh the podcast that GSP did, he actually talked about this, and he actually said, "Bro, like, if you know, if he could fight with anybody." His, the most um, scariest fight for him or will be fighting with Khabib, bro. 
because he was saying like you know you it's so scary like it's different when you're on a like a stand up game and you can strike with someone yeah. and whatever but like he was saying like it's you know being taken down by Habib being dominated you know and and uh Habib put, puts you in a way where he breaks you you know like he 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 holds you and he doesn't let yeah. you do anything yeah if he grab he smashes yeah, you and, and game over <laughs> it's just over it's finished yeah. Yeah, exactly like you know what Habib did to Justin Gaethje yeah to Dustin Yeah, like, doesn't the wrestler. He, yeah. he wrestles. He's such a crazy, amazing wrestler. Yeah, true. He doesn't let you do whatever you want to do. He takes you down, keeps you down, and he smashes the guy like Connor. You know how he, and I think like in some ways, I think when he took down Connor, like he didn't want to submit him or <laughs> yeah. he just wanted to punish the guy, yeah. bro, and beat him up. Yeah, bad. yeah. That's crazy, bro. And like you could see. Uh, you know they were talking about some of the previous fighters that Habib fought, you know, and like their face changed, you know, mm. after they fought with Habib, yeah. maybe like after the first round, yeah, and they were like, shit, <laughs> I can't do anything, you know, like that's crazy, bro. You don't you you, he's so dominant. He's such a dominant fighter. <sighs> like nobody really has gotten any close to him, you know, like. But what what do you think about uh, you know well and then GSP also said that he hundred percent has retired. You know mm. that's what GSP said like hundred percent he's retired he's not gonna fight anymore. Yeah. So he said like he was and like because he's still in good shape, he still trains like he still you know competes, but he said like he's retired. No more. Yeah. yeah. No more. He's, he's he knows that like, it's not worth for him to come back. Into fighting again, yeah. but yeah, but what what do you think about like even Habib retiring? Ah, uh, I I want to watch Habib, but it's good for Ryway because if Habib stay here, <laughs> he 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 he's he, gonna dominate everybody. Yeah, he, yeah, he dominate everybody. So yeah, it's good for Ryway. Mm, give other like give the rest of the lightways a chance to. Uh, yeah, but Ryway still like. So hard. It's crazy, yeah. yeah. It's savages, bro. Heaps of savages, man. Yeah, like, what the cross? <laughs> yeah, bro. It's it's a it's a lot of exciting fights. I think in the lightweight division. Yeah. And uh, yeah, obviously, like you know, like what we were saying before, uh, it's pretty exciting for like Dan and Brad. Yeah. You know, in the lightweight division, there's so many fights for them to have, so many great matchups. You know, and uh, it was pretty sad that Brad's fight got cancelled on that last one. But yeah, I definitely hope to see uh Brad get get it back yeah. in there soon and you know fighting again. He's he's definitely a very exciting. Yeah, he's a uh, so great fighter. Exciting he's fighter, tough. Like, yeah. yeah, he's a tough and and what I think as well with Brad's case, like he hasn't had any easy fights. Mm. Everyone's since, strong <laughs> since he came into the UFC. They've been like throwing all the savages at him, bro. There's tough challenges, bro. It's crazy, like, and he yeah. has always come out on top, you know. Um, yeah, definitely looking forward to that next one. Um, man, I don't want to. I don't want to keep you too long, um, Mizuho. But uh, we've come to the section now. Wise words from the wise man. If you could give people some advice, what would uh, that advice be, Mizuho? Like, first time, like when I come New Zealand before, I didn't have anything, but like I I always. I try to struggle, keep try struggle martial arts, but I didn't get anything, and I didn't get friends in Japan. But I just I try to courage, try to be courage. Then I come here. Then I'm, I got new friends, new families, like Jim Shikabi. Yeah. Just keep trying to keep train. going and don't yeah. give up. Yeah, don't give up. Mm. I can't say never give up, but just keep trying. Yeah, don't give up yet. Mm. Just might be someone find you, then might help you, and then you can try struggle again. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Man, that's pretty good advice, Mizuo. Yeah. Like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's 
it's very important like in this day and age like people give up easily yeah. like they try something it's hard oh yeah i'd want to do it and then they give up yeah they go to something else then. if we didn't give up we still on the way so just chasing the chasing dream mm. and yeah how like you know it's 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 really important to if you have a dream if you have a goal yeah you know you work obviously like just dreaming is not enough you yeah. have to put in the work yeah. to get there but you know like what you said i think that's really that's really good advice is like you know just keep trying like you don't always succeed you might fail along the way but you just got to keep pushing and like i i get what you mean like what you said about that struggle man like it's it's a very big sacrifice you know when you came here no friends no family no english <laughs> bro it's that stupid <laughs> no nah, i would no nah, i wouldn't say stupid but like no bro, it's 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 no like you you come to a country where you know it's english and english is was not your first language yeah. so it's that's big sacrifice man big struggle uh but yeah here you are today okay. and obviously you um you know you've progressed a lot as a fighter uh, mma fighter and you you had some plans you had some like you know you had some big goals you wanted to achieve and you every day you're just getting better so like there is something to that you know like don't give up that's actually like it sounds very like you know everybody say don't give up don't give up like you know, people use that very often yeah. but it's actually, that's actually what it is like you really cannot give up you just got to keep trying yeah. keep going man um is so also it's um it's very sad to know that you will be leaving us soon Uh, <laughs> you'll be leaving Auckland and going back to Japan. Um, tell us, bro, what's like uh, some of your future plans, man? Uh, I was gonna go back to home, my hometown Ishikawa, but probably I go try to Tokyo because I don't want to give up yet. So yeah, one day I want to come back here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I have to get good record, like fighting. Good career, so before I have to fight so many time in mm. Japan. So yeah, I try to find find some fights, find yeah. a gym. Yeah. Have you have Have you had anything lined up yet? Nah, a gym or not yet? Maybe I wanna I wanna belong CKB. Mm. I wanna use this gym's name yep. because I wanna spread this gym like CKB. I think I wanna. Spread CKB steel mm. kickboxing. Yeah, because like Eugene's the best coach, and uh, I love this gym. Mm. Like it doesn't matter who famous people. Mm. Like mm. yeah, still like Israel, a few USC fighter spread mm. CKB, but just I love here. Mm. Like yeah, that's it's different. Yeah, yeah that's it's definitely very different. Really yeah. My best place, my happy place. Mm. So yeah. Just, I want to come back. Hopefully, to, man. Um, yeah, to fight. And uh, so, do you? You intend to take a few more fights in Japan and a few more MMA fights over there, and um, maybe compete in. Re- yeah. Is it Rising? Is it is it MMA or? Ah, uh, Rising is MMA. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to look for some fights over there. Yeah. And there, would you say there's a lot of, might be a lot of uh, fighters in your weight class. Ah uh, yeah, mm-hmm. like but like a little bit smaller, like mm. my my weight class, not as many. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, that's pretty cool, man. Um. Anyway, Mizu, I don't want to keep you any longer. Thank you very much for your time today for doing this podcast with us. Um. I want to wish you all the best in your journey. Um. You know, safe safe travels back to uh, Japan, and hopefully you can find a good gym where you can train and learn and continue to fi- keep fighting and competing. And man, at the end of the day, we hope to see you uh back here again soon. Uh, in in the near future, man, and uh, yeah, bro, just all the best. I I hope to see you do a big and great things in the future, and uh, I'm very sure we'll see you again, man. Zuho, thank you very much. Thank you, Ari. Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. Boom, guys. Thank you very much yeah. for uh, staying with us this far, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and I'll see you on the next one.